Okay, here we go. New setup over there, fresh haircut, no more beard, like a six month hiatus. My original setup that was on the other side of the room over there was temporary. It was something that I did put up and take down every time I wanted to make a video. So it was, it was tedious. I've got a little bit more compact setup now, so I'm gonna be able to make content more regularly. Um, that being said, it's gonna be super helpful if you can share some feedback with me. Let me know what works and what doesn't work, what you'd like to see and uh, we'll move forward from there. Anyway, today I'm gonna to show you how to make gears in Illustrator. I'm gonna use some of the techniques that I used in my uh, very first video, the geometric design video. It's just a different way to use that same technique. A completely different end result though. Hopefully you'll uh, find this useful. So let's just jump into Illustrator and see how it goes. All right, here we are in Illustrator at the new document dialog box, and we're gonna create our new document at a size of 3000 by 3000 pixels. Hit create, and here we go, blank document. So I'm gonna hit M to pull up the rectangle tool, and I'm gonna click once on the canvas, which pulls up this dialog box, and I'm gonna create a 3000 by 3000 pixel square to fill the background. Now you can move this around and get it to snap on the center point. Just confirm that it is perfectly centered, 1500 by 1500. And then by hitting Command R, I'm gonna pull up the rulers and I'm gonna drag out a vertical and a horizontal guide that's gonna to align to my center point. In the layers dialog over here, layers panel, I'm going to lock that rectangle. First I'm going to turn off the stroke on it so it's just a white rectangle for the background. And I'm going to lock it so it doesn't interfere with our workflow. And I'm going to hit L to pull up the ellipse tool and I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift and create a circle that's locked to that center point there. This is the body of our gear. I'm going to just color it a basic black to start with and then I'm gonna hit M to get back into the rectangle tool. And along my center guide here, I'm gonna wait for that to line up and hold down Alt so that it is anchored to the center of that guide. And I'm gonna create a nice chunky tooth for our gear. I'm going to slide it up here. I'm gonna hold down Shift so that it stays centered and then Pressing A, I'm gonna use the direct selection tool just to select the top two points. And I'm gonna taper off this rectangle by making these two points smaller. I do that by going object transform scale and 60% uh, works well. I'm gonna scale it down like that. So I've now tapered off the tooth of the gear. I want it to look a little bit stockier so I'll just make that shorter and holding down Alt, I'll make this wider. So we get a nice chunky tooth. Um, with the direct selection tool, I'm gonna grab the top two points there and in Illustrator CC, I get these round, rounding handles. So I'll round off the top two points. I talked about this feature before, it's one of my favorites, speeds up my workflow a lot. And I create that nice rounded tooth. Now I wanna create copies around here. I've also talked about this before. So you can guess what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab the tooth. I'm gonna to press R to pull up the rotate tool. By default, the rotate tool wants to rotate around the center point of the object that you have active, but we want to rotate around the center point of this gear. So we'll hold down Alt and click on that center point. Pulls up the rotate, rotate dialog box and also moves our center point. And if we rotate that tooth around the circle 60 degrees, that would give us six copies around the full um, full circle here. So let's hit copy. We get our cop first copy. With this copy still selected, let's hit Command D to repeat the last transformation. It's called transform again. And just like that, we've got a nice looking gear shape. If you hit Command Y, it shows us the outline mode and you can see each of the teeth are still separate from the body of the gear. By hitting Command A, we can select everything. 
And then using the Pathfinder over here, the Unite option, we can just clean up all of our paths and merge everything together into the one shape. Our teeth, the, the points of them up here, we rounded them off. So stylistically, it would be nice if we could match that treatment to these inner points here. So using the direct selection tool, you can go and click on each individual point and once you have them all selected, you could round them off, but that can get a little bit tedious. So an alternative that we can use here is the lasso tool. The keyboard command for that is Q. And we can just draw a rough circle around and pick up all of these interior points like this. Now there's some extra points here from the original circle that we don't want. So we can hold down shift and deselect them with the direct selection arrow. And then we'll just uh, use those rounding handles again and round off the interior points. I guess maybe a little too severe. Command Z undoes that. Let's go for a little bit more subtle round. It's, uh, it's not something that a lot of people pick up on, but that little stylistic treatment of your corners um, really helps make this shape look a lot more pleasing. So now our gear here, we can go and create a center um, for it. So holding down Alt and Shift again to constrain it to the center point, which is where we started clicking. I think right about there looks good. Command Y comes out of outline mode. And then selecting both of these, we can create a compound path by hitting Command 8 to knock the circle out of the gear. Or alternatively, for that feature, we could again use the Pathfinder tool. The two shapes selected, we could minus front. It's good to know different techniques to achieve the same thing. It's also good to know the keyboard commands. You could just speed up your workflow. Um, and, and in this industry, efficiency is key. So command Y again goes back into outline mode. L is our circle tool, ellipse tool. Let's create another center point here and a little bit smaller, I think. And that looks good. So there you have it. That's how you make a gear and you get to customize how many teeth you have, how round the corners are, how chunky the teeth are, the way that you treat the center point, whether you've got a large chunky um, rotational point here or something a little bit smaller. So now the next step is to just go and experiment with the variables. Make more teeth per gear, bigger, smaller, chunkier, thinner. And then once you have the gear built, how you use it is up to you as well. You can build logos and packaging, um, app icons, all sorts of other applications where a simple little gear icon will come in handy. You can even start to import the gears into After Effects and have fun animating them. Anyway, that's it for me today. Hopefully you guys found this easy to follow. Hopefully it will be useful to you. Um, it would be great for, for me if you could give this video a thumbs up and if you could subscribe to my channel. Thanks for checking out this video and hope to see you guys uh, in the near future. Cheers.